hear me clearly. America is not a racist country. Welcome to the Dumb Dumb News Channel. I'm your host Dumb Dumb. Before we get started, Facebook is starting to censor my videos, so please make sure you subscribe on the other platforms. I recently joined Subscribestar and will post the details in a future video. This channel is dedicated to exposing the truth by sharing a side to stories that mainstream media and big tech won't show you. Let big tech know you like this content by giving a like and sharing with someone you care about. Sources will be linked in the description so you can read the full details yourself. Today we are covering the trending story of the Republican U.S. Senator Tim Scott. Let's watch the moving speech that started it all. I have experienced the pain of discrimination. I know what it feels like to be pulled over for no reason to be followed around the store while I'm shopping. I remember every morning at the kitchen table, my grandfather would open the newspaper and read it, I thought. But later I realized he had never learned to read it. He just wanted to set the right example. I've also experienced a different kind of intolerance. I get called Uncle Tom and the N-word by progressives, by liberals. Just last week, a national newspaper suggested my family's poverty was actually privilege because a relative owned land generations before my time. Believe me, I know firsthand, our year is not finished. In 2015, after the shooting of Walter Scott, I wrote a bill to fund body cameras. Last year, after the deaths of Breonna Taylor and George Floyd, I built an even bigger police reform proposal. But my Democratic colleagues blocked it. I extended an olive branch. I offered amendments, but Democrats used a filibuster to block the debate from even happening. My friends across the aisle seem to want the issue more than they wanted a solution. But I'm still working. I'm hopeful that this will be different. When America comes together, we've made tremendous progress, but powerful forces want to pull us apart. A hundred years ago, kids in classrooms were taught the color of their skin was their most important characteristic. And if they looked a certain way, they were inferior. Today, kids are being taught that the color of their skin defines them again. And if they look a certain way, they're an oppressor. From colleges to corporations to our culture, people are making money and gaining power by pretending we haven't made any progress at all. By doubling down on the divisions, we've worked so hard to heal. You know this stuff is wrong. Hear me clearly. America is not a racist country. It's backwards to fight discrimination with different types of discrimination, and it's wrong to try to use our painful past to dishonestly shut down debates in the present. After this speech the liberal left attacked him online, let's take a look at what they had to say. Shake my head, that people would call him that and use terms like that. In my opinion nothing he said was wrong. Here is his response to these attacks. I thought the speech was amazing. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, it saddens me. It's, I have many conservative African-American friends, and they go through the same thing. Read Deneen Borelli's book, Blacklash. So just Google my name. That's what she starts. Well, Sean, thank you for having me on your show, and thank you and Lindsay last night. VoteTimScott.com. Your viewers heard your, your request, or Lindsay's request, and you responded, so thank you so much for that. The left has lost their mind today. It's really saddening to see that what the left is doing is fighting bigotry with bigotry, and they've exposed their hypocrisy and their true motivation. It has nothing to do with ending prejudice. It has everything to do with claiming uh, or getting more power. I've never seen such a power grab and using people in such a despicable way. It, it, it is really disheartening to see the left's response. And frankly, even Twitter's response to racism and racial slurs, if it comes from the left, it must be okay according to Twitter's response 12 hours later. But thanks to your viewers for going to votetimscott.com. Thank you all so much. That really made a difference because Lindsay's right. The next several months, if not the next two years of my life, will be st standing in the gap for what we know as traditional American values. We love people, not parties. We love the content, not the color. Our nation stands in greatness because we fought back against those darker angels, and we believed, frankly, in the better angels. I wish the Democrats, who always feign or virtue signal, would take a look in the mirror and ask themselves, would they put up with that from anyone other than themselves? And if you won't police yourselves, don't look to the other side. 
you know, Megan McCain actually said something that I agreed with. If, if you're okay with this, don't, don't talk to me about the important issue involving race. And I, I thought that was a pretty powerful statement on her, on behalf of her. You know, I'm, I'm watching yes. all of this unfold. Uh, sad because I've, we've known each other now many years, uh, yes. and it's just it's just wrong. And the and it's, in this woke cancel culture, it seems like there's very few areas where this type of intolerance is accepted, and it seems to be accepted by major news organizations. Yeah. Well, do you have a message to them specifically tonight? Well, in my opinion, what they're fueling is a backlash. Uh, maybe they don't realize it or not, but at some point, people get sick and tired of being sick and tired, and they start reacting as, and as, as opposed to responding to the criticism and the negativity. Fortunately for me, I have had endure, haven't had to endure for the last couple of years as I keep coming to the conclusion that we got it right. The most inclusive economy, frankly, in American history. Uh, the last administration, President Trump, we created seven million jobs with two thirds going to African Americans and Hispanics and women. We saw the lowest unemployment rate. We didn't care whether you were black or white. We looked for ways to expand opportunities and give people options to make their own decisions. That's what America's about. And sure, we've had some challenges, but we keep rising to the occasion. We confront the person in the mirror, which allows us to move over. But the, the, the left, Sean, the left refuses to do that. The left wants to find a fall guy. They want to find a scapegoat, as opposed to helping build a better America. What they want to do is spend $6 trillion. Where are we going to get it from? They don't care. To do what? To make sure that they have a permanent underclass, people they think they can control. But what I'm seeing, and I spoke with President Trump today, what, what we're seeing happen is this response from good intentioned people who happen to be black, who happen to be Hispanic, who happen to be white, who happen to be Asian, rising up and saying, you won't tell me what to think. I'm going to decide that for myself. So there's a coming backlash to this liberal oppression that is becoming front and center, and they're not even hiding their hands anymore, Sean. That's why it's so important that we stand in the gap for this nation, because the greatest comeback in American history is on yeah. its way. You know, it's amazing here. You did. You gave specific examples of racism. Nobody's doubted. There, are, there are ignorant racist people. There are evil people Absolutely. in this world. And and nobody that I know wants anything to do with those ignorant people. That that that's no. whatever subset group of people. I think the majority of Americans are good, honest, decent people. The beauty of our framers and founders, I would argue, you can agree or disagree, is that they created a system where you can right wrongs, correct injustices, become a more perfect union. We have a history of doing all of that and a lot of bloodshed in the process, and a lot of heroism and courage along the way by people of all races. Um, and, and then I'm like, but Joe Biden, how does he get away with praising the guy that filibustered the Civil Rights Act of 64, the Voting Rights Act of 65, partnered to stop the integration of public schools, saying he doesn't want schools to be racial jungles, and not one person on NBC yeah. News or in the media mob or in the Democratic Party seems to care about that history, because maybe I'm wrong, Senator Scott, but if a Republican, Donald Trump or any other Republican, had that background in history, I'm pretty sure they would criticize him daily. But what do I know? I'm just a Oh, my goodness. It, it would be unrelenting. I mean, there's no doubt about that, Sean. We would be, we would have a, a, a cascading effect. We would never see the light of day because we would be, the, the drumming would never stop. The truth of the matter is, the hypocrisy needs to stop. Uh, I am a black man. I am proud to be black. I happen to be a conservative because I came to the conclusion a long time ago that conservative policies and principles is the way that we set people free, free to be whoever they want to be. You actually are free to disagree with me. That's the beauty of America. And what the Democrats are selling is that you are not free to be yourself. You cannot disagree with the Democrats. You can't disagree with progressives and liberals and still well, be seen well, let me ask that as mainstream in this country. Here is what level-headed people from both sides of the political parties are saying about BLM and NAACP not standing up to these attacks on Tim Scott. I agree 100% with being free to think and believe what I want, to be able to make up my own mind up about things, and to make my own way in life. I do not want the left or the right to tell me what I should and shouldn't believe. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Please share this video for awareness. For the Dumb Dumb News Channel, I'm Dumb Dumb.